Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and today I have the exceptional privilege of taking a look at the first functional semi-automatic pistol ever designed. Uh, and also the first semi-automatic pistol designed from the ground up as a semi-automatic pistol, instead of as a semi-automatic conversion of a manually repeating pistol. This is actually an 1896 pattern Dormus automatic pistol, or Salvatore Dormus automatic pistol. These were first patented back in 1891. In fact, the first patent was July 11th, 1891. That was followed fairly quickly by a second patent in, on uh, November 21st of 1891. Uh, the next runner-up for uh, the award of first automatic pistol wasn't patented until November 25th, 1891. So Salvatore, this was designed by two guys named uh, Carl Salvatore and Georg Dormus, and they take the prize for actually coming in first. Now this is actually a delayed blowback pistol. It's got a pretty weird delaying system, and pretty much everything you read about this will say that it was actually a simple blowback, because it sure appears that way. But when we look at it more clear carefully, we'll realize that it does actually have a delaying mechanism. It is fed by a five round Monlicker clip of eight millimeter Dormus ammunition. Not surprisingly, proprietary ammo because there wasn't any other auto pistol ammo out there because no one had invented the auto pistol before. Uh, it kind of, there's some other really interesting features here. This is actually a more, more of a modern pistol than you would expect for 1891. Now, in total, just about 50 of these were made, uh, the biggest batch being 31 of them that were made in 1896 and 1897 for an Austrian uh, military trial in 1897. And that's when this one was made, this is serial number 23, and it actually has an 1897 Austrian military acceptance mark on it. And I think we need to just uh, go in and take a closer look at this guy, and I'll show you all of its cool secrets. So the Dormus is actually, in some ways, a more modern pistol than you would expect for an 1891 design. Let's, let's look at all of the controls. It is a single action gun, so we have an exposed hammer here. If you want to fire it, you have to manually cock the hammer. We then have two levers here on the back. This top lever is the safety, which is currently engaged. Now, this safety allows me to pull the trigger and drop the hammer, but the hammer stops right there. This basically drops the hammer to a half cock notch. It cannot impact the firing pin, which is right there in front of it, thus it renders the gun safe. Now, if I deactivate the safety and pull the trigger now, now the hammer goes all the way down and you can see it's going to hit our spring-loaded firing pin there and fire the gun. So that's what the safety does. Now the safety also acts as a bolt hold open. By the way, you can see that it cams the firing pin or the hammer back when I engage it there. If I have the safety engaged and I open the bolt, it will lock open. Now the bolt lever is this. So that opens the bolt up and locks it in place. I can now load it with a five round Monlicker style clip. Now, as we know about Monlicker clips, it's going to sit in there. The clip will act as the feed lips for the, the system. And when you chamber the last round, the clip falls out the bottom. Well, there is in fact an opening in the bottom of the gun. So the clip is only five rounds. It's like this long. And what happens is when you chamber the last round, that empty clip falls all the way down the grip and ploop out here. You could in fact leave this gate closed and you could probably fire three clips before you had this thing totally full and you weren't able to stuff in a fourth. In fact at that point the spring holding this closed isn't all that strong. Um, you could probably just continue to load clips in the top and when this grip was completely full of empty clips it would probably just force the bottom one to pop that gate open and dump a pile of clips at your feet. It's actually kind of a clever idea. Now, once the bolt is open, this bottom lever is our bolt release. I'm going to hold on to the handle here to do this gently. I drop that, push this lever down, that releases the bolt, which then closes, leaves the hammer cocked so I'm ready to fire. And then this is our clip release. So if I do not want to fire all of the ammunition I have in the gun, See, it's a little hard to see in there, but you can see the clip latch down there slides over to the side when I push this button. So if I don't want to fire the last uh, rounds in the gun, what I do is lock the bolt open, 
hit that release and the remaining cartridges in the clip will spit out the top. Sights are pretty typical for this period, but actually not terrible. A little hard to get the camera to focus on them there. The only markings on this pistol are the serial number, right there, number 23, and, and this WN97, which is an Austro-Hungarian Army acceptance mark, or an Austrian Army acceptance mark from 1897. So this is one of the guns that was in the Austrian troop trials. Now all of the literature out there about the Dormus, and by the way there isn't much, it all describes it as being a simple blowback action. And it certainly seems that way. If you handle this gun, when you pull this thing back, it, there's no extra resistance, it just it seems like a simple blowback pistol. However, it came to my attention that if you look at the patents, this is actually a delayed blowback gun. And you have to do something kind of wacky to, to be able to actually demonstrate that. What's going on here is that the trigger actually interfaces with this lever. So the bolt's connected to this lever, and the trigger has a component that goes up, and when the trigger is pulled back, go ahead and drop the, see we have to have the safety off, when the trigger is pulled back, not the hammer, but when the trigger is back, it actually has this inclined wedge that prevents the bolt from opening. So this gun is actually set up to use your own trigger finger strength as the delay in opening. Now we can, I can show that by putting a rod down the barrel, and I will hold the trigger down, and when I push on this rod, I can't get the barrel to go back. Now I can feel it pushing on the trigger here, and I can close the bolt by pushing the trigger backwards. That is actually how this gun is delayed. That's a really unique system. I'm not aware of any other pistol that works that way. And honestly, for good reason, that's not a very good way to uh, control the timing of when the gun opens. But then again, this wasn't the best automatic pistol ever, this was just the first automatic pistol ever, and it's perfectly reasonable to assume that it's going to have some elements to it that aren't going to turn out to be the world's greatest ideas. Now, uh, by 1897 the Austrian trials of this pistol were complete, it was turned down. Um, ultimately Austria would adopt a 1907 pattern Roth Steyr pistol, uh, it would adopt the Frommer Stop, and it would adopt um, the, well, in 1911 or 1912 it would adopt the Steyr Hahn. Until then they would go on simply using their, well, interestingly, their 1898 Rast and Gasser revolvers, which would have been in direct competition with the Dormus here. I should uh, mention the caliber, it is 8 Dormus. The projectile was, I believe, 5.1 grams, which is going to be like 125 grain, I believe. Um, have not been able to determine the velocity of the cartridge, no idea. Uh, given this very simplistic delaying system, I'm sure it was a relatively low velocity, and I would expect this cartridge to be basically on par with 32 ACP. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. There is very little information on the Dormus, Salvatore Dormus pistol out there of course, because there are very few of these left, and it was a very cool opportunity to be able to take a close look at this one and bring it to you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, hopefully you learned something cool, a new appreciation for Carl Salvatore and Georg Dormus. If you enjoy this sort of material, please do consider checking out my Patreon account. It's my supporters there who make it possible for me to travel about and track down guns like this to bring to you guys. Thanks for watching.